Somebody else building a steel sailboat suggested the use of a diamond cup wheel. This is a DeWalt Turbo Diamond Cup Wheel, 4 inch. This is what it looks like. I've already tried it out. For me, it did not work. So, this is what the diamond cup wheel did. And it jumps all around, it bounces a lot on the metal when I use it. This is what a regular grinding wheel did. And then here's what the 36 grit sandpaper disc did. The discs aren't that expensive and they're super easy to use. So I'm gonna stick with the sanding discs. Just got done sanding. It's December 28, 60 degrees outside. Here's some of the wreckage from all the sanding that I did. I can't believe it. I'm going to be painting in the middle of winter. Took six hours to primer the outside, both sides and the bottom. Here's an experiment I did some time ago. At first I didn't like it because it easily broke off. But as it has hardened, it's become actually quite resilient. So I can hold it up and bounce it around. It doesn't have to be super strong, but I can put quite a bit of pressure on it. It won't break. This is the rubber bits I showed you earlier with the oil-based paint. It's just half a cup of oil-based paint. And you can see how thick it is. That should be enough for some good insulation inside the boat. I've got the keel attachment primered. That's all I'm going to do with it for now because I have to lift the boat up to get better access to it. And also when I attach the keel, I'm going to be doing plenty of damage to the paint. So there's no point in painting it. It's pouring rain outside. This is how much water came down. That wheelbarrow was completely dry before the storm. Keel fell over. That's all right. It'll give me a chance to paint the underside. You can see it just caved in because the ground was too soft to support it. Inside, it stayed pretty much dry. Another awesome idea that I got in the comments that I didn't get to do when I was constructing was to do the compound curves in strips. What if the strips were like, let's say a foot wide? And Just got done welding in reinforcements for where the keel is going to be. I think people might have been thrown off by me painting the boat because they thought that was it, I'm done with welding anything into the interior. But the reason I did it was to try to protect it from the normally wet winter. Usually it's wet every third day where I live, whether it's fog or rain or snow, and I wanted to protect it from as much rust as possible. And the painting process takes a long time. For me, the whole painting process went as follows. Three days to prepare the interior for paint. Another day for primer, and then another day for a second coat of primer. Another day to paint it, which actually took more than one day, but let's just call it a day. Then a day to let it dry, another day to paint it, a day to let it dry, another day to paint it. So three coats inside, and at least three days to let it dry enough to protect it from moisture. So that's a total of 13 days to do the painting process and it's hard to get that much time during the winter. Found these train rails in the forest. They weigh about 200 pounds a piece. I've got four of them laying down right here. They used to make up a fence they look like ballast to me. I'm gonna tow them with this electric bicycle I made. Made this battery myself. The experts told me that it would light on fire and or blow up. That was two years. 
and 1,200 miles ago. Guess I should have emptied this wheelbarrow before the freeze took place. Here's the key. A little bit of dusting of snow on the boat. That's it for construction. The rest of this video is just a thank you. So if you're done watching, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you to everyone who wrote positive comments. I really appreciate them. I stopped writing thanks for each one because it was taking such a long time. So many positive comments. Really appreciate the encouragement. The anti-naysayer comments are inspiring and pretty funny sometimes. Thank you for those as well. Have a great day.